Hi, and welcome to Mike's Garage. So we're going to do an unboxing today, the EG4 Charge Verter. This is version two. This one's been out for a bit. There's been some amazing reviews about it. Rodney Hunt's done some videos on it, a few others. Amazing product. So we're going to unbox it today. And then I'm going to talk about how I'm going to install it temporarily to do some tests. But it's going to be wildly different than how anybody else has tested it. And I'll talk about how it's permanently going to be deployed. But this is a video you do not want to miss. So let's take a look. Let's see what came in it. So it looks like some heavy-duty battery cables on it. So we'll take a look and see what gauge that it is. Looks like it's four gauge. Very nice. And you have your quick start guide and, and manual. Looks like some brackets. And you have some cables for connecting it up to a generator. Then, looks like some communication cables and then also cables for the, uh, uh, to start up the generator. So very cool. Let's pull out, we'll get the unit itself. So you might be asking yourself, what does this device actually do? Great question. So the charge verter will take any source of AC power, uh, 120 volt, 240, what have you, and it inputs into this, and it could be dirty power, and that's what a lot of people use it for, and it will clean up that dirty power, and then the output of this could then connect to your battery bank to charge up your batteries. So here's a scenario. You have your inverter. It's set up, it is powering either your house or your shop, but once the batteries get too low and you don't have enough solar or wind to charge those batteries back up, what this can do is once it gets down to a certain battery voltage, it can then kick on and then use the generator to charge your batteries back up to whatever level that you want. And you can adjust how much current goes out of this uh, so that way it kind of throttles. So if you have a smaller generator, you can set it quite low. If you have a much larger generator, you can put this wide open. And I believe that it can put out around 5,000 watts, which is a lot of power. So what I'm going to use this for is going to be a little bit different in the test. So let me show you. So if you remember in some of my other videos, I have my two 12,000 XPs powering the shop right now. And as you can see, I have plenty of power. I'm at 53.2 volts, so mostly charged. And I also have my Solus inverter with my two LG Prime 16 batteries. Now, what would happen if my shop batteries were running low and I wanted to use a, some way to charge it. Well, how about the Solus? So I could actually use a compound setup and basically use one system to charge another system. Now, this is completely uh, different than what the charge verter was designed for. It was designed to be connected to a generator. Um, and Rodney Hunt, and like I said, check out his video on the charge verter. He actually hooked it up to grid input and used grid input to help charge his batteries once that they got too low, which was a pretty ingenious way to do it. So that was kind of cool. But what I'm going to do is I am going to connect it up once again to the output of the Solus. I will disconnect it uh, from my uh, combination panel and essentially use that to charge these batteries once it gets low. Now, obviously I can't use dry contacts and I can't you know, have it start a generator or anything like that, but I think I could still make it work or at least I'm gonna give it a shot. If I fail, I fail, but I think it would be a very nice test. And then the permanent solution 
for my charge verter would be to connect it up to my actual generator and use that um, to help power up my home setup, which should be done by the end of the year. And I am so looking forward to getting this set up. So once again, here is the EG4 charge verter. Here's what it looks like. Here's the connectors that are on it. Communication is right there. You've got a very nice break around this just in case, you know, there's any sort of issue, but it's made by EG4. Once again, there's the specs on it. Amazing product. So I'm going to be testing that out and who knows, maybe my test will work, but we shall see. So that's it. Thanks again for watching Mike's Garage.